until it became irretrievably broken down. Us both having tried. When they heard from the Prince of Wales' own mouth that he had committed adultery, that made, that shattered a lot of illusions. I think Charles' confession of adultery was about the, the single biggest mistake he's ever made. Diana made a statement of her own that night. She deliberately selected an outfit that would make heads turn when she attended a gallery opening. She wore her, her up you frock. Uh, it was a really lovely black number. Great legs. I mean, she was out to kill Charles that night. Kill him publicly-wise and, and make everyone wonder whether Charles was just totally mad or not. The following year, Diana gave her own interview to the BBC's Panorama. She even admitted having an affair with her writing instructor, James Hewitt, going further than she had on the audio tapes. Were you unfaithful? Yes, I adored him. Yes, I was in love with him. And she publicly confirmed much of what she'd said in the secret tapes made five years earlier for Andrew Morton's book. Do you think Mrs. Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Most controversial of all, she questioned Prince Charles' ability to be king. I would think that the top job, as I call it, would bring enormous limitations to him. I don't know whether he could adapt to that. If ever a, a woman put the boot into somebody, it was suggesting that Charles could never take the number one job, meaning he was not fit for it. Diana's televised gamble paid off. As it did when the Morton book hit the stores, the public response was overwhelmingly sympathetic. Though she was skewered by Charles' allies, including then Defence Minister Nicholas Soames. It, it really is uh, the sort of advanced stages of paranoia. Given the fact that everything she suspected turned out to be true, how can you say that was paranoia? The Queen had had enough. A month after the broadcast, she urged Charles and Diana to divorce. In August of 1996, the marriage between the Prince and the Princess of Wales was officially dissolved. A chapter in her life had closed. As Diana told James Colthurst five years earlier, she had expected it. I think from day one, I always knew I'd never be the next queen. Put it that way. No one said that to me. I just knew it. When we return, the deadly crash beneath the streets of Paris. The media were not responsible for Diana's death. Did Diana predict her own tragic end? Diana talks about her destiny. Battle-scarred but hopeful, Diana was finally free to pursue the life she wanted. And it would include the romance and affection she craved. I had so many dreams as a young girl. Hopes that my husband would look after me. He'd be like a father figure. He'd um, support me, encourage me, say well done. But I didn't get any of that. So when, one year after her divorce, a handsome millionaire named Dodi Fayed began to shower her with charm, gifts and attention, the princess was receptive. Diana had spent most of her life trying to dodge the press, but now she made a point of showing how happy she finally was by orchestrating a photo op on the deck of Dodie's yacht. The Dodie picture on the boat and the case and so on, I mean, that was a telephone call between the photographer and Dodie. And Diana. It was all being managed. Diana's relationship with the press had always been complicated. She used them, they used her, and it was a dangerous game. Could I ask you to respect my children's space? Out. Out. O-U-T, out. Have a nice trip, ma'am. 